Transportation troubles for St. Louis Public Schools. How the district is battling bus issues just 24 hours before the first day of classes. We've made several attempts to reach out to the district, but they've gone radio silent. Plus, volunteers evicted. Why one North City nonprofit is being kicked out from its community garden. A change in wind direction today, what that means for us. Today in St. Louis Weekend Edition starts right now. This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. All right, wake up, wake up, St. Louis. Right now you are getting a live look at the Gateway Arch, welcoming us in so beautifully on this Sunday fun day. Yes. And we are still celebrating because we're back. We are, we are. Back after we're going to milk it this weekend, and I promise you next week we will zip it. We'll let it go. We'll <laughs> let it go. But we're just so excited to be back with you, broadcasting you 6 and 9 every Saturday and Sunday. Today is August 18th. I'm Travis Cummings. And I'm Mercedes McKay. Thanks so much for waking up with us. Now, we have a lot to get to before yeah. the first day of school for all the St. Louis public school families. But we need to know for all these kids, Tracy, what the last day of summer is going to be like. Yeah. It's going to be perfect. Yay! Yay. It's perfect. They need that good news. They do. <laughs> yes, they do. And this start of the school week as well, it really couldn't get much better than this. Now, what I will say is do not get settled in. This is false spring. So this is going to give us a sense of, or false fall. We're going to get a sense of like, oh, this is so nice. We can put some of our hotter clothes away. No. No, that's not the case at all because heat is going to come back with the vengeance late next week. 71 degrees for us. Winds are out of the west-northwest, so we're seeing that northerly pull right now, which means we're getting some cooler conditions. Humidity is always high this time of day, but it is a little lower than it was yesterday. Yesterday was about 87%, and we'll take that. Our future cast heat index, I'm still showing you this because we only have a 2-degree temperature swing, but it will factor in a little bit. 85 degrees will be the actual temperature. It will feel like 87 degrees during the peak heat of the day. Quite a bit different of a graph than yesterday. Yesterday from noon till about five o'clock, we were in the 90s. Today, we're gonna be in the mid to upper 80s. So a bit cooler conditions for us today. Overall, we're looking at comfortable conditions through the week. I'm gonna go over that as well as the heat impact for next weekend. All right, Tracy, thank you for that first look. New this morning, one man is dead and another is in the hospital after a shooting in the Kingsway West neighborhood. It happened around 615 last night on Yulin Boulevard near Wabata Avenue. Police say one victim died at the scene while the other remains in the hospital in stable condition. This morning, we're working to learn more about what led up to that shooting. Well, this morning, another transportation setback for St. Louis Public Schools. The district says one of its vendors can no longer provide buses for the first day of school tomorrow. It's an issue that will impact about 1,000 students across 23 SOPS schools. The vendor, Extra Care Transportation, says the buses are not canceled altogether. They're just delayed. That is not a denial, just a delay. We will not deny or we will not walk away from providing the school bus services to the families of St. Louis. However, uh, there are certain requirements that must be met when you utilize school buses within any school district, and we want to make sure that we are meeting those requirements. Now, Johnson says her team is working on having those half a dozen delayed buses ready for SLPS by August 26th. That's one week after the first day of school. But that's not the only transportation issue SLPS is working through this morning. Two other vendors have made adjustments to how many buses they are providing. Take a look at this. The district says Shuttle Pro reduced the number of buses from 45 to 25, affecting as many as 1,800 students. Now, yesterday, impacted parents were given gas cars. A third vendor, Victorious Life International, told the district it could not acquire 10 buses to transport students. SLPS says it is working to ensure that parents are notified about an alternate plan. And Five on Your Side also sat down with the founder of Coalition for STL Kids. He says although this transportation saga has been an ongoing issue, it's not even the biggest problem the district faces. It's really inconvenient and problematic for parents when their children can't get to school, but that's like 30 minutes, right? What I would be focused on more is the eight hours that they're in the building, right? What's going on if only 13% if only of black kids can read on grade level? What's happening? 
The district alerted us about the transportation update yesterday afternoon. This week, we've also learned SLPS will provide before and after care at all elementary schools starting tomorrow. So that's some good news there. Well, and even with a full plate of transportation troubles, SLPS is dealing with other situations in North City. This morning, the district is evicting several nonprofits from the Clay Community Center. They have until next week to clear the property. Yeah, and I actually caught up with one organization yesterday that's scrambling to get out. It's really frustrating because North St. Louis definitely does not need another vacant building. This land has seen a lot of life. We've uh, hosted hundreds of young people here on the property doing field trips, um, service learning activities. We've uh, hosted our team program, the Sunflower Institute here. Now the community garden outside the Clay Community Center in North City is being dug up. Nick Speed's nonprofit, Ujima, is here to provide equitable access to food, education, and employment. We are in a position where St. Louis Public Schools is evicting us. Speed showed us this email he got from a professor at SLU. The university partners with the nonprofit and facilitates the property. The email says the district proposed a lease agreement to the university in late May that was just financially impossible for them. Uh, there was a conversation about raising the rent as well as having folks pay for the uh, water damage in the building. And so uh, instead of coming back with a counter offer, giving us an opportunity to come up with a new MOU and a plan, they decided to just kick us out. And so we've made several attempts to reach out to the district, but they've gone radio silent. Volunteers came from near and far to help clear the lot on North 14th Street on Saturday. Putting in rows so people can plant food and flowers and then just suddenly being told you guys have a week to remove all this. Yeah, it's pretty heartbreaking. Even our teens are feeling feeling the feels. Um, they put a lot of hard work and effort into, you know, cultivating and building this. Speed, who owns another space down the road, says this won't stop him from sowing seeds. We know the sense of urgency is great in places like North City, and so the, the work is going to continue. All right, and so the SLPS Board of Education's vice president took to social media saying, quote, a private university that doles out millions of dollars in tax abatements demands free rent and refuses to pay for significant damage it caused to a public building, end quote. We reached out to Davis to elaborate. He referred us to the school's district school person. We have not heard back yet.